Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 4 Strategy Gaming and we're going to be taking a look at a Protoss strategy today. Now in this particular video, our Protoss player here is Rocks Kiss Palmy and our Zerg opponent is Mad Frog. Let's go right into Palmy Vision though. And yeah, Protoss strategy today. So what we're going to be looking at today, this strategy that we are looking at is very map specific. This is going to be something that you're only going to be able to really uh, safely implement on certain maps. Now, what are we looking at with that said? What we're looking at specifically is going for a very early expansion. We're going to be expanding at 14 supply. Uh, we're going to be using a forge and cannon to defend, and I'll talk about that later on. And then we're going to be getting six gateways we're going to be doing a six gate and a plus one weapon uh, push is essentially what we're going to be doing we're going to be getting six warp gates pumping out the units and then once we have that level one upgrade uh, we're going to be pushing out at that point. This is going to be a very strong and very effective push if you can pull it off. One of the real great benefits to gateways and to warp gate tech is the ability to be able to warp in units based off of what your opponent gets. So, you know, if we see a, this is against a Zerg player again, if we see a Roach heavy army, then we'd start warping in more Stalkers. If we saw a Zergling heavy army, then maybe we'd want some more Zealots, maybe some more Sentries for those force fields to prevent surrounds. Uh, it's it's really great. It provides so much versatility, especially earlier in the game. So yeah, we're going to be getting a very early expansion. Now, why are we able to do this? How are we able to do this? We're able to do this on, again, this is pretty map specific. You're going to have to only be able to really try the strategy on maps that have a natural right inside of your base. It's very hard to expand early against Zerg because of the Zergling. Zerglings are so quick, they can have so many of them early in the game, and it makes it very hard to defend a natural if it's not tucked away in your base like this. So any of these maps that have the natural right inside of your base, uh, it makes it very easy for you to expand safely to it. Obviously the 1v1 map here, I know there's a lot of 3v3 maps as well. I think there's a couple 4v4 maps that have that as well. Obviously that's not our focus though, we're looking at 1v1. So specifically on this map, natural nice and safe inside of your base, you can, safe, you can expand here. And as long as you take care of your front, you don't have to worry about any Zerglings. So how are we taking care of our front? Why are we doing it in the way we're doing? Well, we're going to be getting this forge and we're going to be using a cannon. That's going to do a really great job. You can grab a zealot to block off the choke right here. And then something else that's going to be really key to being able to defend the front of your base is going to be getting a sentry. Uh, having that force field ability, that's going to prevent the two major threats. The major early game threats that we're going to have to worry about against Zerg is a early roach push or a baneling bust. Now with that sentry, you can really prevent both of those blocking the ramp with the force field. If it looks like you're not going to have enough energy to continue blocking the ramp then chrono boosting out another sentry to help with that once that first one runs out of energy the cannon alone is going to do a great job especially coupled with the zealot blocking off the choke now in this specific game palmy doesn't actually use a zealot to block off the choke and you you may say well that's really dangerous it's not it's not dangerous so much because he does a great job of scouting grabbing the zelnaga tower he sees any zerglings coming he knows if there's a push and uh if he saw something coming chrono boosting a zealot is what he would do but Aside from that, instead of doing that, he just uses his scouting information, uh, realizes that there is no push coming, and just skips the Zealot altogether. That's not something I suggest doing for the average player. If you feel like you're really worried about early Zerglings, just get the Zealot. Start off with the Zealot, block off the choke. That plus this cannon is going to be plenty defense until you get your sentry out. Now let's look at this timing here for the build order. Started off very basic with a 9 pylon, but then kind of screwed everything up by going very unorthodox for a 14 Nexus. Again, only going to work with a safe natural expansion inside of your base like on this map here at 14 supply right after that nexus we did get this forge and then at 17 supply came the gateway followed up immediately by a cannon at 17 supply so you can see here palmy is seeing this one zergling move out he feels pretty safe though that cannon will do a good job of taking care of that zergling so that's been our build order thus far. Then at 17 supply, got that assimilator. 23 supply is when the Cybernetics Core came up. 30 supply, getting the second assimilator. And then right away at 30 supply, after that second assimilator, getting the warp gate research. Um, but basically, instead of exact numbers, you got to think of it like this. We got a Nexus, then the Forge Cannon for defense, then the Gateway. Once the Gateway was done, Cybernetics Core came up right away. As soon as that was done, we did get that warp gate research. And then at 30 supply, we've been stockpiling minerals because the, the Nexus was up at our natural having that fairly well saturated with all those minerals dropping 
five gateways. And this is what I was talking about. This is a six gate push. So these are just about done. Started researching that l weapons level one upgrade. And basically what we're going to be doing is changing these into warp gates. We're going to start warping in units. And as soon as this upgrade is done, we're going to have a really strong advantage. And we're going to be pushing out at that point as well. Here's that sentry that's going to, again, protect you from any early game pushes. That's exactly what you want to do. Have that sentry hanging out right here. Get ready to force field the ramp if you see banelings or roaches coming. But again, Pommy's doing a great job of scouting and grabbing Zalnaga Towers to check if any push is coming, and he's seen that no heavy push has come. Now let's talk about why this works. Well, this works for a few reasons. For one, pretty much almost every single Zerg player. Obviously, there are no there are no definites. You can't say always or never in this game, but it's almost the case that every Zerg player expands early. Uh, lots of Zerg players are comfortable with it, and it puts them at a good advantage if they can pull it off. Well, if your Zerg opponent is expanding at 15 and you expand at 14 or something in that vicinity, as long as you, you know, have this front wall to save you from any Zerglings, you're not going to see any heavy pushes early on, you know. A quick expansion from your Zerg opponent at 14 or 15 supply, you're not going to see a strong Roach or Baneling bust push. So you don't really have to worry about that. And with this cannon, again, with that sentry, you're going to be pretty safe. As soon as these are in, started warping in the units, you can see now that weapons level 1 upgrade is finished and we're going to be pushing out. Um, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, the versatility of the army. You can see we have a, just a pretty solid mix. Now, the rest of the units that we're going to be getting are really going to be dependent on what our opponent has, what we see their army composition is. So like I said, if we pushed in and we saw a ton of roaches, we'd stop getting so many zealots and we just start pumping out more stalkers, um, seeing a lot of zerglings, maybe wanting a few more zealots and like I said, a couple sentries as well, using those force fields to pre prevent surrounds. These are all things that are going to be very effective and do very well for you. Um, and just moving in, doing damage at this point, make sure you continue to warp in units as well. I know a lot of Protoss players have problems with using that warp gate research when they're away from their base. I'll tell you right now, oh, here's a good thing to note too, Guardian Shield. For those of you who don't know, that's going to cut down all splash damage from these Mutilus. Uh, the damage reduction gets rid of any of the splash. That is very, very beneficial. If you see Mutilus, make sure that you're putting down Guardian Shields to protect your Stalkers. It's going to help you a ton. Instead of the Mutilus hitting three units at once, they're going to be hitting one, and that is a big, big difference. And you can just see how devastating this push was, you know. The gateway push, the four gate push, uh, but in this particular instance, a six gate push because we have this expansion up uh, can be very devastating when you time it right. Again, at the 10 minute mark, you can see how much damage we we have done. And Mad Frog did have to leave the game because Palmy just did an excellent job with this push here. Something I want to note before we go into the build order, uh, as I was saying, I know a lot of Protoss players have problems with using that Warp Gate tech when they're not at their base, when they're attacking. Something that can help alleviate that is proxy pylons. Basically, you're, you know, you're over here, I'm attacking, I'm attacking, and then just very quickly, this can take a matter of two seconds. You hit W to bring up your Warp Gates, or if you have a hotkey to something, hit that hotkey. Run over to your pylon that's somewhere near the attack, and then just warp in the units you want, grab them, rally them to where they need to be. As soon as they're done being warped in they will go there immediately and then run, run right back to the battle and like I said that can take a second to two seconds once you learn how to do it fast enough being away for that short amount of time it's not going to be as terrible as it could be if you have to run all the way back to your base and then have to send units across plus that that run distance for them uh, is very long and they won't be as effective reinforcements having these proxy pylons definitely a good idea for when you're doing pushes like this so a couple of notes again, uh, this is really going to work on only really a map that you have a safe natural expansion. And then this early game defense in the forge, cannon, and gateway. Get that early game zealot if you feel like you're worried about early zerglings. Follow that up with a sentry as soon as you can. That force field's going to be a lifesaver. You're going to have this expansion up, start saturating it. And then when that cyber next core is finished, you're going to be getting that warp gate research. Then getting five more gateways, putting us at a six warp gate total. Getting that level wep uh, weapon one upgrade as soon as that's done go ahead and push out and very strong very effective push and then also once this push has started you can really change your army composition based on what your opponent has so let's look at that exact build order start off with the nine pylon following that up immediately with a 14 nexus a 14 forge then a 17 gateway 17 cannon 23 supplies when we saw that cyber next core go down uh, 20, 17 supply before that, I'm sorry, we saw the assimilator go down, then 23 was that cyber next core, 
30 was the second assimilator and then right after the second assimilator you're getting these five additional gateways at 30 supply as well and then when those are about halfway done start getting that level one upgrade chrono boost that in as soon as that's finished warp in your massive units push out and you're going to do a lot of damage so once again guys this has been forced from force strategy gaming if you guys like our videos and you like what's going on here please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel keep watching and keep owning guys all things you guys should be trying to implement in your own games now going to be trying to pick off some units you know every small victory is a victory nonetheless getting one or two extra kills while your opponent is caught off guard that is something you should try to do um, every resource counts every unit counts if you can pick off just a few units from his army that is going to make you that much more uh, successful in the actual full engagement once it does take place